There are few times in history when the saying, we're all in this together, would be more applicable than right now. Charles Best, he came up with a revolutionary idea during lunch in the teacher's lounge. My colleagues and I were talking about books that we wanted our students to read, field trips we wanted to take them on, art supplies that we needed, but these ideas wouldn't go beyond the teacher's lunchroom. And then I just figured that there were people from all walks of life who wanted to help improve our public schools. Through Donors Choose, ordinary citizens can directly fund projects initiated by enterprising public school teachers. Teachers request dictionaries, science kits, field trips, resources that their students need to thrive. Then you can give to the project request that most inspires you with a donation of any amount. It's such a simple, wonderful idea. You know exactly who you're helping and how you're helping them. I love to give and know that I, I have a connection. It's a very easy way to give back to public schools. This is exactly the kind of social innovation we should be encouraging across this country. I love DonorsChoose.org and it's why I'm on the board and why I'm committed to helping in any way I can. Make sure you check it out, DonorsChoose.org. Let's not underestimate the power each of us has to change the world for someone. I joined DonorsChoose.org in 2003 as employee number three, and it was soon after Charles had been featured on The Oprah Show. And you all know what happens any time Oprah touches anything. It turns to gold. And soon after Charles had been featured, he was inundated with calls from individuals from around the country and actually around the globe asking to bring this model to cities, states, and countries. The most persistent of all those quarters was a philanthropist and entrepreneur in North Carolina. His name is Michael Brader Rahe, and he happened to be a friend of mine. And I remember very distinctly the phone call I got from him one day where he said, I just saw this program on the Oprah show. I'm a little embarrassed to admit that I did see this on the Oprah show. Um, and, uh, and I want to make it happen. To Michael, it was a no-brainer. He had been a technology teacher in a public school. He then went on to, um, to launch uh, an auction software company that he sold at the height of the tech boom. For me, Donors Choose was a no-brainer because I had been a public school teacher. I taught third and fourth grade in Baltimore, Maryland, and then I had gone on to work with teachers through Teach for America. As a teacher, I had used M&Ms as math manipulatives. I had gone to the carpet store and begged the owner to give me carpet squares for my classroom. I had spent a lot of time at the public libraries, like scrounging through the penny book section. And I, of course, spent my own money on things like seedlings from the hardware store. Uh, I was not alone, and there were plenty of other teachers in the same boat as I was. Uh, in my work with teachers, uh, I had story after story of teachers who would come to me telling me about all these things they wanted to do with their students and I had nowhere to direct them. There was a teacher who uh, was about two hours from the coast, it was in eastern North Carolina, whose children had never seen the ocean, and she wanted to take them on a field trip, and she had nowhere to turn for the funding. Or the teacher who wanted to start the after-school SAT prep program, because they knew that's what their kids needed in order to inspire them to take that step in believing that they could actually go to college but they didn't have the resources they needed, and I had nowhere to direct them. Soon after I had that call from Michael telling me about this website, donorschoose.org, I was hired to lead our expansion in North Carolina. How many of you have been to North Carolina or are from North Carolina? I see it, yay, oh my gosh, lots of hands, this is great. So if you're from the state or you've been there, um, you know it's a, it's a fairly diverse, large state. You've got the mountains on the west, you've got the coast on the east. There are 100 school districts, rural, urban, serving populations of 4,000 students and serving populations of 100,000 students. So when I knew that I was gonna get to take on this awesome opportunity of 
taking this model from New York City and bringing it to North Carolina, we knew that we needed to think about it in a, a, probably a little bit more thoughtful way than Charles did, which was kind of throw the, throw the website out there and see if it stuck. Um, and so we did that through a pilot process. We determined that we needed to test it in a few key districts. And so we identified 10 school districts where we launched the website representing that diversity of the state that I was telling you about. One of the things that we learned, though, interestingly enough, is the urban, rural, 4,000 students, 100,000 students, yes, all those things were really important to understanding the state and understanding how the model would roll out. But the most important factor was the leadership in those school districts, the superintendents and their leadership teams and their passion and desire to make it a success in their districts. After we identified those 10 districts, I canvassed the state meeting with the superintendents and their leadership teams, inspiring them to get behind DonorsChoose.org in our launch. We launched in those 10 pilot districts, we worked out kinks, and then nine months later, we opened our doors to all public schools in the state uh, at a press conference that we hosted with three governors in North Carolina. We were off to an amazing, amazing start. Along the way, there were other, of course, other cities and states who kept sort of saying, all right, come on, come on, we want you to come to our city, state, country. And one of those uh, states was South Carolina. By this point, we had put in a more formal RFP process. You know, after Charles was on Oprah, he just got slammed with the phone calls. And like I said, my friend Michael was the most persistent. Um, now we had a formal process in place. It was an RFP process <coughs> where community leaders, it was often individuals or corporations or foundations or a combination thereof, would, would, um, would apply to essentially be a part of Donors Choose. One of those areas was South Carolina. And we decided this was a great opportunity for us to pilot. Could we do this in a, in a regional fashion? So I had been hired on as the executive director in North Carolina. Could I oversee both North and South Carolina? Could I engage teachers? Could I engage school district officials? Could I work with corporations and foundations in not just one state, but both states? And both of our local advisory groups said yes. And we did the same thing. We launched again in South Carolina with a press conference hosted by the governor in the state capital, Columbia. And then we proceeded to go on a bus tour of the state. One of our lead corporate supporters was a company named ScanSource. They were headquartered in Greenville, South Carolina. This is their corporate bus, which they donated the use of and they branded as DonorsChoose.org as an opportunity for us to get out the word about DonorsChoose.org across the state. Along the way, we were expanding to cities like Los Angeles and Chicago and San Francisco. And in the wake of Hurricane Katrina, we expanded to Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama. At about this juncture, my job had changed. I was now overseeing these regions, and each of these regions that had executive directors who were charged with building relationships with corporations and foundations, engaging t teachers and school districts, and we knew the time was ripe. We were in these 12 different cities and states, and we knew that it was time to open our doors to all public schools in the US. It was 2006 and we put in place an expansion plan. And uh, the most important piece of the expansion plan was figuring out how we were gonna secure the money to make this all happen. Along the way, as I mentioned, we had used this RFP process. Now we just wanted to open our doors completely to all public schools. We were very fortunate to engage with um, the Omidyar Network. We needed to raise $13 million to bring DonorsChoose.org to scale. And uh, the Omidyar ne Network uh, came in with an investment of about six and a half million dollars. And then we had individuals like Reed Hastings and David Philo and Vinod Koslo who came in and matched that six and a half million from the Omidyar Network. 
We announced our expansion once again in a, um, in a press conference that we hosted in New York City at one of our initial schools that we had worked with, with our board member and amazing supporter, Stephen Colbert, sort of announcing the, the launch. Well, we learned a lot along the way, as you can imagine. Um, one of the things, as I mentioned, I work with our partnerships team. And so we have two different sources of revenue to fund all the projects that get posted by teachers at donorschoose.org. One is people like me and you who go to the site and, and fund projects that we're passionate about. And the other is in building partnerships with corporations and foundations who are also passionate about bringing projects to life. In 2007, we launched a partnership with Crate and Barrel. It was actually a gift card partnership um, where Crate and Barrel distributed gift cards to over a million of their customers. And we learned some interesting things through doing surveys and focus groups with these customers. Crate and Barrel saw an increase, a 16% increase in spending among the people who redeemed these gift cards. They actually saw an increase in spending, a 5% increase in spending among people who just received the gift cards. They saw, uh, they realized that 50% had told other people, hey, Crate and Barrel has given me this charitable gift card from DonorsChoose.org. And they saw a 54% uh, increase in perception of Crate and Barrel as being seen as, as community minded. We knew through this partnership that we were really onto something, that we could help companies do well by doing good. And since that time, it has really shaped how we form our partnerships. We work now with companies like Starbucks and Facebook and Kia, and we work with them to help them achieve their corporate objectives while making this lasting impact by supporting public school classrooms in their communities or in areas that are meaningful to them. We can build campaigns focused around everything from employee engagement to customer loyalty to customer acquisition to brand awareness. That one distribution to Crate and Barrel customers launched us into a whole new realm in terms of building partnerships. The second thing we learned was that even though uh, we're a nonprofit, we're not a, not, we're not a boots on the ground nonprofit. We're an online marketplace, we're a crowdfunding site, and yet when we launched and we opened our doors to all public schools in the US in 2007, we did it with this regional model. It was a hub and spoke model. It was a concept that uh, we had had a, a group of MBA students help us put together an expansion plan and this was their idea of, well, you guys need seven regional teams uh, to make this launch happen in order to engage corporations and foundations and build brand awareness and to engage teachers, this is what you all should be doing. We learned really quickly that we really didn't need seven regional teams, that we were not a boots on the ground organization. And while we had kind of modeled ourselves like other really successful nonprofits like City Year and Citizen Schools and Teach for America, and you all can think of lots of others who have this sort of, had to have a national presence but have these regional models, we didn't need to do that. We were an online marketplace. Teachers could talk to us on the phone, they could email us. The same went for donors and corporations and foundations, and obviously there's also planes and trains. So over the next, few years, we slowly consolidated from those seven regions to two, which is what we have today. Um, and that was an, another amazing learning, thinking about how do we take our model and learn from other models, and yet our model is not the same as others. And the last big learning, well, I shouldn't say last. This is the third learning. We had plenty more than this. Um, but the third learning that I wanted to share uh, with you all is, is what I call know thyself. Know thyself, know who you are, and know who's going to thrive and be successful working with you or within your organization. Today, when we go to hire uh, folks to join our team, we're interviewing just as much for culture fit as we are for skill set, for people who are going to thrive in our, in our organization. 
because we know that if someone's thriving at donorschoose.org, it's going to lead to our organization thriving and to, to building the, upon the success that we want to. Know Thyself has been an amazing journey and lesson learned for us as we've grown over the past seven years through our, uh, since our nationwide expansion. When I joined the team back in 2003, I would have never dreamed that we would have, by today, delivered over $270 million worth of resources and experiences to kids across the country, engaged over a million and a half supporters, and helped over 12 million kids while having a presence in over half of public schools in the US. I literally thought, thank you. I, I literally thought that we were just, oh, this is going to be so fun. We're going to take this model from, from New York City to North Carolina, and we're going to help more kids in classrooms and teachers like, like myself. In fact, when we launched in, in 2000, crowdfunding wasn't even a word. It wasn't the movement it, was, it is today. We're thrilled that uh, organizations have come after us, like Kickstarter that Nat was just talking about, and Kiva, and Etsy. In fact, today, some people call us the Kickstarter of classrooms. Thanks to a, actually, one, other, uh, one thought on where we're heading. Um, what's next? We have a big, hairy, audacious goal that in any given school year, one million people will support over $100 million worth of resources in 100% of high poverty schools in the US. We're on our way. Uh, this school year, we're on track to delivering over $75 million worth of resources and experiences, but we still have a ways to go. As I mentioned the gift cards earlier, and hopefully some of you have noticed, each of you received a gift card thanks to a generous gift from our board of directors. I hope you will take the time to pick a project that you are passionate about. It might be a project in your hometown. It might be your favorite book as a child. It might be something related to the big idea that you've been noodling on over the past day and a half. I hope you'll take the time to pick a project and then tell the teacher why you picked their project. In doing so, you will become a card-carrying member of the crowdfunding movement. Thank you so much.